But all right, so you formed this amazing company, uh, Mumpreneur. I was Mumpreneur, yes. <laughs> Tell us about it. We were young mums ourselves with young kids and we were stay-at-home mums but we dreamt of something more. We knew that there was more out there for us. Uh, my sister and I have always been quite entrepreneurial and ambitious and big dreamers. And so we wanted to start our own business and have something amazing. And we tried running businesses before, but we found it was so isolating and we couldn't find the support that we needed. And it was really hard doing it on our own. And we knew that there would be other women just like us who were at home with young kids who needed that support and a community around them that they could reach out to and ask for advice and ask questions and just turn to when the times get tough because in business, times get tough. And so that's where the idea for the community of Osmopreneur really started. I find it really interesting that there's a lot of these community kind of things that are developing now, just often a very mm -hmm. brief tangent. One of my other interviews is Sel Grover who started up um, an, an app, Giggle, for women, which was basically a place where it's just an electronic space, I suppose, where women could get together and and and, um, and talk and and discuss stuff and find accommodation and support each other generally for which, with whatever it is that they're doing. So, yeah, I mean, there's this, this real upswell of that kind of thing happening. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, as humans, we need connection. It's it's who we are. We need that support. We need people around us and people to talk to. But often it can be really isolating, particularly, you know, for women at home with young kids or people working from home, people working remotely. And so being able to tap into a community online or, you know, in any way like that, you can talk to people pretty much any time of the day and they can be from anywhere of the world, anywhere in the world. And that's the beauty of online, I guess. Okay. And how do people get onto it? So we run the Osmopreneur Awards each year annually and we come together in person for that event in Melbourne this year. That's happening on the 14th and 15th of August. Uh, we also have a Facebook community where people join and ask questions and, and connect that way as well. So it's mainly Facebook or are there other medium that you're um, using? Yeah, we are also across all the other platforms. So we're at LinkedIn and Instagram and even TikTok. And yeah, but Facebook is our main platform. It's kind of where we started and and it's where our community come together. All right. So if people want to find you, they just got to search Osmon. Can you say that for me? Osmompreneur. <laughs> and we also have a Facebook group called the Women's Business Collective. Thank you. <laughs> and, and, and that's how they find you. But look, um, I my, my wife is actually famous for saying, you know, we don't have um, we don't have families to serve economies. We have economies to serve families. And the thing that I really, really like about this little group that you've you've formed is that I think it's it's going into a feminist trope that isn't anti-man and and doesn't measure women uh, it doesn't measure women by the metrics of men if that makes sense you know what i mean because like you know oh we got to have um we got to have quotas in the boardrooms we've got to have quotas in parliament and even to me most importantly cultural things that you see like like the movies like wonder woman 1984 uh which was just terrible like it's just like you know she's just superman and then there's and then there's new Star Wars movies with Ray, which is a uh, oh god because I'm a Star Wars fan. It's just like oh my god, that just that, that just kills me. But it's kind of like the thing that I don't like about the way uh, you know the the idea behind all those things is really it's diminishing, as I see the mm -hmm. dif distinctions and the the real value of women. Yeah, well, I mean, Osmopreneur is all about being able to combine motherhood mm. with running a business. And for a lot of women who are mums, they love being with their kids and they're wanting that. And so tra the traditional workplace, the nine to five model, the going into the office was never designed with motherhood in mind. It was never really designed with women in mind. It was originally created so that, you know, the women would stay home and care for the children and look after the house and the men would go to work mm -hmm. nine to five. And so that model doesn't work 
for families. And a lot of women try and fit into that model, particularly women who are working in corporate. And when they have their first child, they kind of can struggle along with it. But by the time the second child comes along, all of that juggling is just so hard and they're looking for flexibility. They're looking for better options that work for themselves and their family. And so, you know, it's, it's less about the men, men and women thing than about women trying to find that level of fulfillment and what works for them and their families and wanting to be there and be present for their kids, but also wanting that personal fulfillment of following their dreams and their calling. And, you know, a lot of women have a really strong calling to make a difference in the world and do something that they're passionate about. And that shouldn't be swept aside because they want to be present with their kids and stay at home with their children. And so it's about balancing both of those things. And the word mumpreneur can be really polarising, but I don't understand that. It doesn't need to be. I'm not saying that. Why and how? Seriously, like, can, can you explain that? Obviously, you've had some um, pushback. Yeah, sometimes we get pushback, and I think it's perhaps from women who are working in the traditional environment where they don't have that flexibility and they're kind of wishing they did or they're seeing that the word mumpreneur is diminishing like why can't you just call yourself an entrepreneur and of course we are entrepreneurs but it's more about the lifestyle of being able to blend motherhood with entrepreneurship and there's women all over Australia all over the world who are doing it really successfully and I guess for us Ozmopreneur is about showing that it's possible and inspiring the other stay-at-home mums out there that if they've got a dream and they want to be with their kids, that it's possible. You can do it. Mm. So, yeah. See, that's good. that's good too. And, like, you know, purely from a, you know, selfish capitalist point of view, and, and I love the <laughs> fact that stuff like this has come up, like it means that you're harnessing the intelligence, ability and drive Absolutely. Of, of, of people because... And again, like I totally agree with my wife who's sitting right next to me, actually. So if you see a hand come across and that's, <laughs> that's probably, but like, um, oh, and, and I'm not just saying this because she is here. I totally agree with that, with, with that maxim, but it is about getting it right because like you need to get the relationship right. It's like, yes, it, we, we don't have families to serve an economy. hundred percent. You know, we have an economy to serve families, but there's a reason we developed an economy. <laughs> like you need to have that relationship, you know, you need a way of generating wealth, you need a general way of, of, of you know, a certain lifestyle and, you know, a certain amount of food. And like you said, in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs things, once those basic things have been taken care of, you need people to feel fulfilled and happy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. And, you know, a lot of the women out there are single mums, so their whole family is reliant on their income. They They need to be working. So, like, the idea of being a stay-at-home is a lovely idea, but in practical terms... Can't do it. It's not, yeah, it just doesn't work for a lot of people. And so this gives them the opportunity to do something that fulfills them, but also contributes financially to their family's income. It's it's important, I think, to to have that balance too. So mm. yeah, a lot of women want to start something because they're trying to do good work in the world. So they're starting nonprofit organizations and things like that. But it's really important that we value women's work and that women are paid for the work that they're doing. And so we're very much about making sure women are paying themselves and, you know, running education programs and things like that that encourage women to value themselves, to pay themselves and to create a really stable financial model as well as following their dreams and doing something that, you know, lights them up. Yeah. And that love. Mm. 100%. 100%. Look, how did you get this off the ground? It's been a long time, but really, I think when we started back in 2009, it really was the start of social media. And so Facebook and Instagram and all, and LinkedIn platforms like that really helped us get off the ground with very low cost marketing in those early days when we needed to get the word out to the community. And because we were we were there at the start when mumpreneurs were kind of becoming a thing, they were discovering online and they were setting up online businesses and all of those things, uh, it, women really just gravitated to us and we grew really quickly because so many women were like us and they were looking for this. They were looking for a place where they could get the support and help to grow a business that would enable them to be at home with their kids. Mm. Yeah, no. That's uh, look. That's pretty cool. Can we go for a 
to uh, a bit of a tangential conversation about social media because there's been mm -hmm. a lot of issues obviously you know social media has has changed the world and and one of my other guests uh, that I spoke to has suggested it's actually going to change human evolution a really quick contextual I, I know it's called what a really quick contextual uh, understanding with that is like when human beings start first started to utilize fire because um, cooked meat is easier to digest uh, and it meant that you could put a lot more energy into your brain rather than digesting. So there's a, a really big discussion that the fact that human beings got this um, cultural, I suppose, adaptation to that meant that it Im impacted on our physiological evolution. Like if you, if you think about that, that that's, that's absolutely amazing. And there's been a number of other instances, and I sincerely believe that um, that's going to happen with with this new technology we have, especially social media and artificial intelligence. And obviously, with AI, it's not just going to be a relationship between like how we use this stuff and and, and that, but like you know, we're going to get stuff planted in our heads soon. Like that's that's actually going to happen. <laughs> I really kind of you know that's so. Like, what I'd like you to do is discuss what social media has been to you, the positives and the negatives and how you see things panning out. It's an interesting one because I, I do know that the levels of burnout have risen, the levels of uh, mental health disorders have risen, mm -hmm. and there's definitely correlations between social media but also smartphones and email and the fact that often people are working around the clock do you know what I mean? They're not just working nine to five anymore. Hmm. They're, you know, their emails are on their phone all day and all night. You can check emails at midnight at when you first wake up in the morning. And so if you don't have clear boundaries around social media, around work, then that is going to lead to burnout. And then, of course, we've seen so many cases of cyberbullying and problems like that that are happening for young kids in particular. Uh, so, yeah, I think... We need to be more conscious of how we're using technology overall and we need to have better boundaries in place for, you know, digital use as a whole. So doing things I, like... I, I totally agree with that. Mm. But, well, I mean, one of the other interesting things is, like, you know, when, when you read these discussions, well, online or on... Because, like, I'm a lot of, I, I still like reading actual newspapers yeah. and... And, uh, and and magazines, uh, there tends to be a polarization. You know this 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 real binary. Oh, it's really good, or it's or or it's or it's demonic. It's you know it's 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 it's, it's really really bad. And mm -hmm. like I used to, and I saw you snigger at that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I used to snigger at that too. But like again, one of the other conversations um, that I've had, uh, and it was around artificial intelligence. And I'm going to get this guest back on actually. Yeah. Because the way AI works. So what we have is a disembodied intelligence, right? It's there living in a computer. And it's basically, it's an algorithm. It's something that you can program. That's really not all that different to what a human being is with the exception that we're embodied. So human beings are embodied intelligences, right? So you're going to be actual, I, I can see a time where there are going to be this, and, and I mean this and people, like people are still sniggering at this now, but I, I suspect they won't be laughing at this within three to five years. Um, where there will be these artificial intelligence that are either created by human beings or create themselves that manifest certain uh, aspects of, of the human condition. So um, you might have a, a a demon, like something that creates itself to be a malevolent mm -hmm. spirit to undermine humanity. Angels, you might have that. You, you might have that kind of thing. You might, you know, why wouldn't you, and and why wouldn't these things uh, become you know, fracture right down into stuff like, oh, well, this thing sees itself and creates itself or is created as a as a werewolf or a vampire or something. I mean, human beings are doing that. Like, I'm you know, sure you've seen that online where you've got these, you know, uh, people who are identifying as werewolves or animals or, I mean, <laughs> yeah, non-artificial I mean, <clears throat> intelligence. You know, currently we have hackers who can hack into things and cause chaos and yeah perhaps that's going to happen in the future with ai as well that hackers will deliberately go into ai programs to create chaos and Absolutely. and damage so anything's possible it's difficult to predict the future and i guess all we can do is be really conscious of of what 
we're consuming and, and how we're using the technology ourselves. And also we've got to remember that it can be used to start up excellent stuff like, you know, what you're doing. It's not this simplistic binary. I mean, I mean, it's it's like the Gutenberg printing press, really. I mean, the first thing that was, as you know, was published was the Bible, thank God. Um, and it's, uh, but like you can also use a printing press to print porn. I get what I mean. It's the press itself is neither good nor bad. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Tech is just a tool and it's how we use it. And so for us building our business, it's been incredible. It's enabled us to do things and create the kind of business and lifestyle that our grandmothers could have only dream, dreamt of. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like we have the ability to run online businesses that are reaching women all over the world, that are creating impact all over the world and bringing women together who previously didn't have access to education and opportunities for running their own business and all of those things. So, yeah, it, it is really powerful and really positive as well. And I think you have to balance that. You know, even this conversation that we're having now, this this channel that you have is enabled by tech yeah. and yeah we're able to talk about all these kind of things and that's pretty cool oh ab absolutely i think it's fantastic and speaking of really really positive things can you tell me about the changing the world awards in london with the duchess of york i'm such a yes. you, you know, I'm a <laughs> thank you yeah so the women changing the world awards we held our first one last year and the duchess of york received the golden heart award for the incredible work that she does she does a lot of charitable work all over the world, she has her foundation, Sarah's Trust. And so we are delighted to be partnering with her this year for the Women Changing the World Awards uh, with Dr. Terai Trent as well, who is an incredible woman from Zimbabwe and Oprah calls her her all-time favourite guest. So, yeah, and the, the vision for these awards is to recognise the unsung heroes, so the women who are out there doing the work who have an incredible cause that they're getting behind. They're making a difference and creating really positive change in, in the world. So that could be in the environment, it could be in health, education, uh, in business, can be charities, but also entrepreneurial ventures. They could be working in like a traditional job, a corporate role. And we're really wanting to elevate women and recognize women and create a platform for women who are making a difference in the world from everywhere. So women from last year, we had women from Zimbabwe attend, from wow. um, America, all over Europe, Asia, Australia, everybody flew to London to come together and celebrate the women who are changing the world. It was pretty powerful. And our vision for this is for it to be an incredible event and an incredible celebration of the women leaders of the world. So, yeah, we're really excited about it. Nominations are open at the moment. They close on the 10th of March. And so if anybody watching knows an incredible woman who is changing the world, please nominate her. Let her know how incredible she is because so often women are, you know, overlooked and undervalued and unappreciated. And it's really important to recognise the work that these women are doing. Hmm. On that, it's just flicked another quick question in, into my head. I, I think I really do think that you're at the leading edge of, of, of on a bit of a wave as to what's happening in our society. Mm -hmm. But what I find just as interesting is the wealth creating. Where do you think we're going to go? Because you're talking about, you know, this the slight disintegration of the traditional ways we used to do things with corporate structures and creating wealth. In your, in your opinion or experience, how are things changing and what's the future going to look like a little bit when it comes to wealth creation, workplaces and stuff like that? I would love to see more flexibility for men and for women. I think that that will make a huge difference to everybody. Um, for example, my own in my own situation, my husband started working from home three years ago where previously he's always had to go to work, leave, leave home early in the morning, go to work all day, come home after five. And the change that's happened within our family just from that happening in the last three years has been huge. You know, he's healthier now. He goes for walks, walks the dog every morning. He goes rowing twice a week with his sister. He helps out more around the house because he's able to. He's there. He'll make the school lunches. He'll take my daughter to school in the morning, whereas he was never able to do that before when he was working. Mm. And so I can see tiny shifts and changes happening. You know, 
cultural change is slow and it takes a long time, but things like that happening, men having more flexibility, which enables women to have more flexibility, can be a, make a big difference in the world. And so I think, you know, as difficult as COVID was, it has changed in some ways. Workplaces which before were like, no, there's no way we can ever offer you flexibility are now starting to say, okay, well, perhaps we could, perhaps you can work from home one day a week, perhaps you can work these hours instead of, you know, the nine to five. And so, yeah, my dream is that we will continue to have that flexibility, that people can work in the way that works for them and their situation because everyone's situation is different and that's what I would love to see for the future is more of a balance and more equality and more men and women both supporting each other to both share their dreams and, and reach their goals. That resonates with me so much because like a lot of the way that feminism is portrayed and, and look, God alone knows what that means. I've actually had entire interviews as to what that meant. And, and at the end we came to the conclusion is like, well, because there's no defining authority, like there's not like a Pope of feminism. You know what I mean? Like, even if you're not Catholic, um, you know, the Pope is going to influence Christianity. You know, the, the Catholic Church yeah. is going to, in a certain way, has a certain degree of authority, even outside of its ambits. So, you know, there's a definition of what it is. Um, but that, that's just not true with feminism. Like, it, it, can, it can mean you can project whatever it is that you want and what you believe it, uh, you know, believe it, it, believe it to be. So you do see, like, a, and I've actually seen this, like, in in, in, my, in my previous um, workplace, like, I'll, without going into the precise details, mm -hmm. where you get, like, legitimate uh, misanthropy, like, you know, the hatred of men. And that's real. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right, right now, you know, I, I get kind of, like, angry with people. It's, going, hey, hey, hey. And it's like, no, no, I've seen it. Like, and, and in fact, I've been, on the, I've been on the receiving end of it, and it's not pretty. Mm -hmm. But you speaking about this idea of this partnership and working together, it's a really different conceptual framework to a way that a lot of feminism has been shown in the past. It's like, we are against men. We hate these guys. Eh, we want to beat, you know, we want to, mm -hmm. it's, it's like this zero sum down, this zero sum game. We've got to push them down so we can come up. It's like, no, <laughs> like, you know, it's just like, yeah. And it doesn't have to be like that. You know, I, I have three sons. So as well as a husband, as well as a father and brother and brother and, and family members who are men. And so that's not what feminism is to me. And But it is about teaching my sons how to be respectful of women, how to, um, and modelling for them. My husband and I have shown them, I hope, what it looks like to be a supportive team. You know, my husband and I are a team and we support each other to do the work that we do and I hope that my sons have recognized that and that when that they get their partners they'll recognize that you know it's for both people to be in charge of cleaning the house and both people should be participating in raising the kids and caring for the children and making dinner every night it's not up to the woman to be doing all of the washing and all of the cleaning and all of the cooking because that's not fair and so yeah I think feminism is about creating change in those kind of ways, which, you know, they seem like small things, but they're actually big things on a, on a grander scale. It's about equality, equality in the home, equality in the workplace, equality in leadership. Um, it's not about women trying to take over the whole world and throw out all of the men in government. It's about women also having a say and having a voice and mm -hmm. their ideas being heard as leaders equally with men. And... We are seeing change. We are seeing progress. You know, I definitely know that that's, that has happened. But in other areas, we still have a really long way to go. And one of those areas would be um, VC investing for, for founders. You know, women receive 2.7% of the VC funding. The vast majority of the funding still goes to men. And, you know, it's got worse in the last three years. Sorry, what's, v, what's VC funding? So venture capital funding. So oh, right. start, you, when you start a, a business and you're wanting to scale up and you go to investors for money, you are 97% less likely to get funding just because you're a woman founder. Right. So there are areas like that where we still need to work on solutions to how we're going to fix that and how we can work with male investors to get them to see the qualities that women founders have. Mm. Um, so discrimination still exists. 
but I, I am hopeful and I know that we've seen change and I think that taking the approach of working together with men, having male champions who understand what's going on, having men like you inviting women onto their show to ch talk about these things mm. is really important and really powerful. We can't achieve feminism on our own just as women. We mm. need to work with men if we, want, if we want to see equality. And I think creating more equality for men and things like flexibility and, and the way that men work benefits everyone. Another exciting, cool thing is that you're also speaking at Tropical Writers, and I, and I want to hear yes. about that. Yeah, so we love Cairns Tropical Writers Festival. So another thing that we do, we run Osmopreneur, we run the Women Changing the World Awards. We also have a publishing press. We publish books, um, Women Changing the World Press, books written by women, women thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and women changing the world. And so we're speaking at the Cairns Tropical Writers Festival about marketing your book and the business of books. So everything from the idea, how it's, you know, when you get the idea for your book and then making it into a, uh, a sellable product, pitching it to the media, the press release, the book launch, um, and your ongoing marketing strategy once you get it into bookstores. So we're very excited to be presenting at Cairns Tropical Writers. We also are launching our latest book, which is Women Leading the Way. So we'll have some of our authors there. It's an anthology collection of 25 incredible women from around Australia and internationally. And we'll have some of those authors there on the day talking about their chapter. Is there just a general message you'd like to give to the, you know, the good listeners of, of, of Northern Vibe and, and you know? Uh, well, we didn't talk on the fact that uh, my sister and I are both from Innisfail. So we are running a business from this small farming town, but we had big ambitions and big dreams and we're now running a global business from Innisfail. And so I guess my message to your viewers today would be if you have a dream, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, if you have a dream and you believe in it, you should go for it. You should you should try it. So, yeah, for anyone out there who's thinking about taking action on their dreams, my advice would be to go for it. 